iOS 11 is finally here. Well, at least the beta is. So the final version of iOS 11 gets released in September alongside the iPhone 8. But for everyone who's a developer or simply wants to try out the new features in iOS 11 ahead of the release, well, the beta is here. So beta 1 was released right after WWDC, which was on June the 5th. And now more than two weeks after, the second beta has also been released. Now, in case you haven't seen my top 35 plus features, in iOS 11, definitely check that out. In that video, I covered the main features of iOS 11 and the main changes. So welcome to the Zone of Tech, I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to cover 15 plus major changes in iOS 11 beta 2. So as always, grab some popcorn and uh, enjoy. Okay, so iOS 11 beta 2 came a bit unexpected. So it was released on a Wednesday, which is a bit weird. So usually new betas are released on Mondays. And also usually the second beta is the biggest change. Fixing most of the bugs that we've seen in the first beta, but also adding new major features, uh, new functionality, and also redesigning some aspects of the interface. But for the most part, iOS 11 beta 2 doesn't really change the design, or it doesn't really add anything revolutionary. So it's mostly here just for bug fixes and performance improvements. And I have to say running this on my iPhone 6s, which by the way wasn't even done as a clean install, feels so much better now. So everything is quicker, apps do load a lot faster, and the animations, everything feels so much smoother. So performance wise, I would say this is a pretty big step coming from iOS 11 beta 1. Now don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, so it's still glitchy, it's still slow, and it still lags from time to time, so it's very far away from iOS 10's fluidity, but it's so much better than the first beta. And it's also going to get faster and more optimized and more fluid in uh, future beta versions. So beta 2, some pretty big performance improvements. Next up we have a few changes when it comes to the control center, so a few small changes I would say, the first one being the colors of the toggles, they, they're a bit different now. So for example, when you turn on power mode, low power mode, this one now turns black and previously it had a yellow icon and this also applies to a couple of more toggles. So it's not really a big change, but I do believe that this will continue to change the colors and the icons in uh, future beta versions as well. Also in terms of the control center, the panel, the control center panel and the settings has been slightly redesigned. So we no longer have that long list that we had before Instead, we have this new button here, customize controls. So this would take you to the list that we had before. So it's much more organized now. And you also have this new toggle here for enabling the control center within an app. So for example, if you don't want to be able to use the control center when you're using an app, for example, you can finally do that. I don't personally think that this was ever an issue since you did have to drag the control slider twice if you wanted to enable it while in an app. So it did have a safety mechanism, so to say, but now you have the option to disable it entirely in an app if you if you really wish. Next up, if you go into the settings app and if you go to uh, Safari, under the advanced tab, there's a new option to turn on experimental features. So you can enable things such as constant properties, CSS, spring animations, web GPU, web animations, and so much more. Then we also have a new animation and the lock screen. So when you pull down from the lock screen, there's this new blur animation. And you also get the same animation when you pull up to go back to the home screen. So it looks pretty good. I think maybe the blur is a bit too much. Again, a lot of things will change until the final release of iOS 11, which is going to be in September. So even though we have this new animation now, it's probably not going to be the final one uh, in the final version of iOS 11. Next up, let's say that you want to save photos or documents so if you press the share button, there's a new save to files button. So this one pretty much adds the photo or the document to the files app instead of the iCloud drive like we like we had before. And then we also have a couple of changes when it comes to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So in the control center, if you disable Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, instead of turning them off, iOS will now disconnect you from the current Wi-Fi network or the current Bluetooth, Bluetooth device that you're connected to. So this means that if you want to disconnect from, let's say, your AirPods, you can do this in a second, but if you want to turn on Bluetooth or turn off Wi-Fi entirely, you'll have to go into the settings app to do that. What do you guys think about this? Do you think it's a it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? I personally think that this is actually a really useful feature to have. I do disconnect from a Wi-Fi network more often than, uh, than I simply turn Wi-Fi entirely off. But let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this. Do you think it's an, it's an issue or do you think it's a big improvement? And finally, this is something we've all been waiting for ever since WWDC. So do not disturb mode while driving is 
finally here in iOS 11 beta 2. So you can enable this from the control center. Previously, it would just vibrate so nothing would actually happen. But now when you enable this from the control center, obviously you have to have it customized in the control center first off. It finally enables DND while driving. And speaking of DND mode while driving, we finally have settings for this in, in the settings. So if you go to the settings app and if you go to the uh, do not disturb panel, you have a different panel for the DND while driving mode, which you didn't have in the first beta. And from here, you can manually enable this mode. And in case you don't know what this does, it basically makes the entire display black. So all notifications will be silenced and the display won't even turn on when you get them. However, all calls that you get will be sent over to your car's uh, audio system via Bluetooth. So you don't really have to worry about them being silenced. And the cool thing here is that you can set this so that it enables automatically. So this mode actually uses the accelerometer, the gyroscope and the GPS from your phone to determine that you're actually in the car and driving. Or you can also choose for this to be enabled when your phone connects to your car's Bluetooth, which for example would also work if your car is parked, which won't work in the first case, or when you're simply not inside a car, just in its proximity and the engine is obviously still running. And then you can also choose what auto reply messages you can send. So if someone sends you a text while driving, your iPhone will automatically reply with something like can talk, I'm driving now, or whatever message you write here. Then we have a pretty small Siri improvement. So when it comes to Siri dictation, it now supports Hindi. Now when it comes to Siri voice, however, it doesn't have any new languages, unfortunately. So I really wish that it does add Romanian sometime in the near future, even though I highly doubt that. Now we also have some changes when it comes to the battery widget. So if you're familiar with the battery widgets, uh, previously you only had a widget if you had a Bluetooth or a device connected that had its own battery. So for example, if you had an Apple Watch connected to your iPhone or the Apple AirPods or a smart battery case with the iPhone 6s or the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 7, you would actually get this option to add this battery widget on which you could actually see the batteries of all of your connected devices. Now, the good news is that you can finally have this widget enabled just for your iPhone. So no need to have any extra accessories connected. And a pretty small change is that if you go into settings and accessibility, you now have the option to reorganize the accessibility shortcuts. This was something that wasn't possible before. So I think it's a pretty useful improvement for anyone using the accessibility shortcuts. Let me know in the comments, by the way, if anyone still uses this. Pretty useful for a dark mode, by the way. Another small change is that if you use Spotify or Google Play Music or any uh, third-party music app, you would actually get the album artwork on the playback screen. So previously this was only possible with, uh, with the Apple Music, but now it's good to see that third-party apps also support this as well. Speaking of Apple Music, we got a small improvement which honestly should have been here from the very start. So when you search for a song, you finally get an indication of what each result is. So if it's an album, you can clearly see that judging by the icon and same goes for if it's a song or an artist and more. And taking a screenshot has also been improved. So in iOS 11, when you do take a screenshot, you now have this window and if you tap on this, you can now make notes so you can write something on the screenshot. But aside from this, the only thing that you could do was to slide it to the left and that's basically how you would save it. Now in the second beta, you can also hold on it and you would get options, more options for uh, sharing, saving to files and uh, more. And something pretty weird is that the volume HUD is back. So it, this was actually removed in the first beta and it was replaced by one that was less intrusive. Actually, the perfect word for saying this would be obtrusive. But yeah, now it's, it's back in the second beta which is a bit weird. So some pretty interesting new features, I would say. The biggest one I would say is definitely the performance improvement. So my iPhone success feels so much faster now than with beta one. If you wanna see the main features in iOS 11, definitely check out my uh, 35 plus features video in iOS 11. These were just some new features in the second beta. Other than that, if you have enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. For more videos like this one, I have some pretty cool stuff coming soon. And also don't forget to enable notifications on my channel by simply tapping on that bell icon so that you're notified as soon as I upload a brand new epic video, even if it's even if it's not epic. Oh, and also in case you're wondering uh, why my setup looks so weird now, I'm actually in a holiday, so I'm not at home. So yes, that's, that's the reason why. I wanted to do this video and cover the second beta of iOS 11 because it comes with quite a few new features and I really wanted to uh, make a video on this. So that's, that's the reason why. So feel free to give this holiday video a like if you have enjoyed it. And yeah, this was pretty much it. Thank you all for watching until the end. If you've made it to the end, 
I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.